Tony, with leading off a two-parter for you, just generally, what is your philosophy behind trying to find a leadoff hitter, and then what do you like about Simo filling that role? Yeah, I mean, Simo wants to be in there. He, he wants to win. I mean, to the point where those uh, competitive juices will kind of boil over or overflow, which, I mean, you, at times you got to tame that down, and then when it's gone, you miss it. Uh, with a guy like Drew Gilbert, for instance. Uh, but for a leadoff hitter, it, it kind of depends on who you have. I mean, we haven't really said we want to play one style of baseball or the other other than, um, you know, we want our guys to play hard. Um, so a little bit of it is the hand you're dealt or the people you recruit. And for us, we don't really have, you know, a lineup that speaks to th this guy's a good, you know, slasher or this guy just needs to get on base or, you know, a lot of variance. Um, we're blessed to have more than a handful of guys who could be middle of the order hitters for really any team since we've been here. And, uh, you know, at times you kind of wonder if you're doing the right thing in any spot. And, and in the leadoff spot, for instance, you got Simo, one of your best guys at driving in runs. He's in the top of that spot, which will probably sacrifice a few RBIs, but he's a confident kid. So um, anybody can, can kind of brace that first at bat sometimes. If you just see six pitches, but you don't get a hit, it's a good at bat for your teammates, just not for you. Uh, so you got to have thick skin and be confident like he is. And um, you know, the other thing is, if you do the math and you keep the lineup the same year, that's going to be the guy that has the most at bats out of anybody else. So um, he's arguably the most dangerous offensive player we have, at least on certain occasions. So there's a lot of things that go into it, but I also think maybe one, it showed up more last year than anything. One strength of the staff is. We have healthy debates amongst all the coaches and, and kind of voice our opinions, and we're not afraid to try something. And sometimes it doesn't work at all. Sometimes it's risky, uh, but you know, we try different things, and, and the times we've tried that, it's, it seemed to fit. What's your like? You got with Stamos back on the mound tonight. Yeah, it was great to get him out there. I mean, he was uh, itching to do so. He always wants to be out there. At the same time, when he's in the dugout, he's always involved in the game, whether it's actively just kind of watching. So he's prepared, cheering on his teammates, all the good things you're hoping for as a coach. So um, just at the end of the summer, it's wild how it worked out. It was the last guy, you know, it was Griffin Merritt the year before. Um, this year it was him. He was the last guy added to the roster. And I was really, really excited at the time uh, just because he's a very likable kid. Um, but uh, I'm more and more excited every day. And he's going to help us win some ball games. But again, he just kind of, that's the type of guy you want to have on your team, regardless if he pitches with his right arm, left arm. He's a hitter, um, just a defender. Uh, so it's just good to get him out there. And uh, he, he's older. He doesn't, you know, not worried about him being in a rhythm or, you know, get him get him in a situation where there's a guy on base so he's prepared. I mean, he's he's older. He's experienced. He's throwing a bunch of different situations. He just needs to get back into a groove where he's available all the time. And, and fortunately, we're there. I don't mean to jinx you here, but it feels like you guys have hit on a ton of these transfer pitchers the last couple of years. Just what's kind of the key to evaluating those guys? Well, originally, we didn't want to dive into deep waters with that stuff. When the rule changed, um, we had the 22 team, which kind of spoke to development. And, and everybody preaches and says that word in recruiting. But we truly are confident um, in the development piece. A part of it is how many people we have involved the resources we have, and then just it's really important to us. There's a lot of people here that didn't have a lot of ability starting out or had to scratch and claw and fight for everything they got. Um, so starting from, if you want to call it the bottom of the depth chart, I feel like all of, the, all of our kids get all of our energy to, to try and help develop them. Um, but having said that, we also recognized, you know, it's a part of college baseball now, in particular in the SEC, because there's some kids that do well at other places and want to be in the league that maybe is – at least the most talked about. Um, so for us, we're not looking for too many, so we can kind of, it's frustrating. There's been a couple that yeah, I wish we had last year or this year, but uh, we just kind of pick a couple that are a good fit and they've also got a proven track record. So we're off to a pretty good start there. And then you hand them off to, to Coach A and it, it's gone well. So, I mean, we need to put it to paper. The, the kids that have been here shouldn't transfer unless you know you're gonna play <laughs> more and you're going to improve your situation. I, I like guys staying where they're at. Um, but, you know, we should put the paper. The guys that have come here have all not only been on the field a bunch, but have had success. Not just on the mound, but positionally, too. What you learned about this team uh, pre-SEC play? Um, they got, they're a little tougher. 
Uh, I would say since January. I think at the end of the fall, that was a challenge you put out there. And sometimes it's tough to judge that. But I think they're tougher than maybe the coaches gave them credit for um, early on. Um, I think they've handled the lineup getting posted pretty good. There's certainly been guys up in the office that want to know what they got to do to play more. But no one has complained. No one's pouted. Um, that sounds simple, but that is massive. <laughs> I mean, for the coaches, that is massive. But also for the guys playing. Like, I, I played one time at second base, and it ain't fun to take pregame in and out when the guy that's the other second baseman is pouting and he doesn't like you or he doesn't like you because you're playing. And, um, you know, I'm just trying to throw out an example of how it can kind of create a toxic situation, even if it's just a small one. Um, so those, those two things have been impressive. And there's been some others, you know, like – Getting Matty D back out there after a while, and, and um, B Rob's first career outing was tonight. So there's been a lot of firsts happening and a lot of boxes checked, but it's early in the year. We need to just keep evolving as a team. What's your scout on Alabama? Uh, it's, it's, you know, a lot of times you guys ask me, um, you know, on Tuesday nights, and the Eastern Kentucky got all of our attention, and that includes the players. I really like the way they approached. Spring break, a contested weekend, a heated win on Sunday, uh, a true sweep, uh, which, you know, the first weekend we played mixed competition, and they were all business. You could sense it well before the scoreboard started. So that's kind of where our focus was, but um, Alabama has a new coach, so there'll be new energy there. And then we know some of the players that are returning. Uh, I'm sure they added a few too, but um, we've, we've got some people that truly earn their salary in our building that have already been digging into that. So we'll, we'll connect and join forces. But they're an SEC team. We've got to go on the road. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm familiar with who their new, co new coach is. He'll do an excellent job over a long haul there. And I don't see why that wouldn't have already started now, too. How, how important was that Dallas strikeout, especially after going down 2-0 in the count? It, it was big, but, but also just the way he was throwing was really good. We say it to the guys, but I don't think they really listen, um, including kids that come to camp or kids we recruit. Um, you know, college coaches are not all geniuses, but they have their kind of their master's degree in baseball, so to speak. And when they're watching these kids, they're not always just looking for what you're doing, it's how you do it. So, you know, some guys, if you know what a pop time is, catcher, you can cheat your butt off and get a real quick time throwing the ball down to second, but it's gonna turn off a scout or a coach. You know, you wanna see a guy that looks like a ball player and does it right, and you get a fair, fair look at him. I don't know if that example applies, but um, for our guys, often we're looking at their presence and how they're handling situations. And eventually, you gotta, you can't just go 0 for 40 as a hitter, and we'll just keep putting you back out there because you have good presence. But the way he was throwing the ball and the and the presence was huge, and the byproduct was able to get a strikeout. You you pointed out the fact that it, it kind of had a little clutch feel to it going down 2-0 because you know we're trying to squeeze in a lot of pitchers in a short amount of time out there. Christian Moore just talked about the difference in the culture this year compared to last. Um, why do you think they were able to build this close culture so early on in the season? I, I think a part of it is um, it, it's not like last year's team was, was poor at the end of the year. Um, I think they picked up where they left off. And then, um, you know, we inherited some guys like Billy's just a natural fit. We're blessed. We already kind of spoke on how, like, Stamos is – immediately kind of like he's like Griff you know immediate kind of leader even though he's new and blended in right away um, I don't know him and Kirby and Xander I don't know what they got going on I mean, if they don't have a podcast they could probably get away with having having one um, so I, I think I think a lot of it stems too from your core Ensley and Burke and Chuck th th those guys have been around the block and, and Payne um, Ethan Payne that is and they know what works and what doesn't work here and you know, 2022 is a year too. Like we won some games, but there's also a fight in the dang locker room and there's others, you know, it's not rosy every day. So it's like getting in the cage. You figure out what swing doesn't work and you don't repeat it. And you figure out what swing does work and you try and repeat it. And I think our guys have collectively made a really big push to do that. Um, and then, you know, we've, we've tried to get good players here. We don't need the best players. We just want good kids from good families that'll work hard. And that'll make for kind of what we got going on now. Where's AJ Russell's health at entering this weekend? He's good. He's throwing a bullpen, and, and we kind of check the boxes. Um, I don't necessarily know um, how early in the weekend it'll be, or or, or when it'll be, or what kind of situation. Um, but if we wanted to, 
you know, if we felt like, hey, we got to go get somebody tonight or we wanted to get him an inning tonight, we could have maybe pressed the issue there. Um, but early in the year, still fairly conservative. I get it. This is a watermark and we're about to start conference play. Um, but if you take a step back and look at the entire picture of the season, uh, we just need to keep progressing as a team. And we're still kind of in that mold where we'll be kind of conservative with a guy like uh, Perry and Bates. It's frustrating to not play those position players tonight, but just a little sore in a couple areas. So just, just being conservative. Yeah, how do you sort of manage the, uh, it's more important obviously to be, to be at your best later in the season than it is right now, but the SEC is such a competitive league and you, you know, y'all made a run last year, but it's hard to do that. Yeah. How, how do you manage that sort of with your team and with yourself in terms of wanting to win every day, but also kind of trying to see the big picture? Yeah, well, I think um, you, you better come to the park and bring it in, in our league and you, you <laughs> You're wasting your time if you're picking. I, I don't know what the rankings are. I'm sure the top 10 has got to be littered with a few teams in our league. But to me, you might as well just throw them all in the same hat. Um, if you host them, you'd like to think you got a little bit of an advantage because you're at home. But it doesn't matter which SEC team is. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be hell. I said that the other day, so I feel like I can say it again today. I didn't get any mail or anything, any email. Or, um, and then when you go on the road, it doesn't matter which venue it is. It's, they all have a difficult thing about them, and it's tough. Um, so you better bring it, first of all. And then when it starts, yeah, you, you're kind of trying to get to, you know, 15 wins is a great watermark. It sounds like you got low standards, but if you can get to 15 wins, you put yourself in an awfully good position. There's some other math that coaches, I, I don't talk to the players about it, but you can say, so you're trying to get there. Well, how are you going to get there? You got to try and win on a Friday or a Thursday if that's when the series starts. And if you don't, you can't get too down. Um, because baseball already will beat you down, and then the SEC will beat you down worse. So if you're throwing fire or kerosene on that fire by beating yourself down a little bit too, or, or we're doing that as a group in the locker room, it just makes for a big mess. And then if you happen to win game one, um, it's certainly not time to bust out the champagne or, you know, some of these 19-year-olds, Welch's, I think, makes a, a nice champagne-looking bottle. Um, it's, it's not time to do any of that yet. So. You know, on the hunt for the next one, and you hope they pile up to somewhere that watermark where, you know, 14 should get you in a regional, but 15 means you're not sweating, and 13's possible, and 16's a hell of a lot better. But um, one day at a time is a nice little cliche for a reason, in particular in baseball. So that process will start for us on Friday. Thanks, Tony. Thanks.